New research shows that we may be able to predict how much protection a COVID-19 vaccine provides, and more studies are needed. But we asked Dr. Niha Narula with Stanford HealthCare about what the early research shows. Yes, so as we get ready for booster shots being administered next month, we saw new research being presented at the meeting in which the CDC and FDA highlighted new results from a preprint study showing the correlation between titers of neutralizing antibodies and the risk of infection. Um, now, just as a reminder to our viewers, neutralizing antibodies are proteins that are made by our immune system after a vaccine is given to help disarm foreign pathogens, in this case, the coronavirus, um, when it enters your body. And so this particular study actually looked at vaccinated individuals that received the Moderna vaccine and compared antibodies of the levels of antibodies of those that were fully protected, never got sick with COVID to those um, that small number of individuals that ended up getting breakthrough infections. So both arms were vaccinated, one arm, the smaller arm that got um, the, the COVID uh, breakthrough infection versus those that never got sick. And what they found was what we theoretically expected, um, but now we have practical proof for. Higher levels of antibodies were in fact seen in patients that never got sick, meaning vaccines were efficacious and the higher level of antibodies did correlate with less likelihood of developing COVID. So these findings are actually important for a few reasons. One, in the future, this particular study um, does show that we could potentially um, it, look at newer vaccines and um, there would be no need to run thousands and thousands of um, tests and studies on people um, and have it take long periods of time. Rather, we could efficiently um, run these tests and see vaccine efficacy based on antibodies um, with a few hundred people instead. Well, that's possible in the future. Additionally, with the booster shots coming out, this does help us um, kind of have that evidence and confidently, confidently say that the booster vaccines will help us because the main point is to raise antibody levels in, um, in ourselves to protect us further against this virus. We, of course, are waiting for more data, specifically from other vaccines, um, to show if these patterns hold within the AstraZeneca group, within the Johnson & Johnson group. Um, and additionally, we also need to know like how many antibodies, right? What is the, the, the quantity or the level of antibodies um, that gives us protection versus doesn't? Um, so we don't have that quite yet. Um, and we also know that you know, antibodies are one puzzle piece to our very complex immune system and the protection we receive from vaccines. We also have our T cell response that we've seen as an, a crucial um, part of our immune system fighting off the, the virus. And so as we've seen throughout this pandemic, science is very complex, um, ever adapting. It's not always clean, um, but it does build upon itself. And ultimately, we are going to need more data, more evidence from additional studies to support these findings. So more to come. We also asked about booster shots and if we should expect the same side effects, if any, as the first and second shots. Yes. Yeah, so um, as early as September 20th, um, booster Moderna and Pfizer vaccines will be available here in the U.S. for those that are six to eight months out from uh, being fully vaccinated with the mRNA vaccines. Um, at this time, the data that we've received is only coming from a few other countries that are also doing booster vaccines, primarily Israel, Russia, and Hungary. Um, and we've have limited information, but what we're seeing so far is the side effect profile is very similar to or better than the side effects we saw with the second mRNA vaccine. Most commonly pain, soreness at the injection site, um, fatigue, muscle aches, body aches, mild fevers, nausea, headaches, um, sometimes even redness and swelling at the injection site are seen. This was also noted in our immunocompromised population that started receiving their third vaccines by the end of July as well. So um, these side effects, we've seen them. Uh, most people will have very mild and temporary side effects. And we continue to recommend similar suggestions. Stay hydrated, make sure you get lots of rest, exercise the arm that you've received the vaccine in uh, to reduce discomfort. Over-the-counter analgesics can be used um, after you've received the vaccine, as long as you have no other contraindications to them um, uh, personally. So um, again, temporary, mild. Um, if you have any questions at all or experiencing side effects other than this, please see or contact your medical provider. 
Dr. Narula also talked about a warning from health officials about the use of a livestock drug to treat COVID-19. That is right. Um, since the beginning of this pandemic, we've seen um, multiple claims um, of this particular drug, ivermectin, make its way into the news and being treated as um, uh, without evidence, really, as a preventative or a curative treatment option for COVID-19. And just in uh, the past month of July, per the CDC, we are now seeing a five-fold increase in adverse reactions being reported, um, hospitalizations, as well as calls to poison control centers in various states, um, reporting adverse reactions to ivermectin, which is an antiparasitic medication that is used to deworm livestock and used in humans as well for things like scabies or other parasitic infections. Now, this medication has been studied and clinical trials are going on. However, However, there is no evidence at this time to support its usage to prevent COVID or treat COVID. In fact, the few studies that were done have been closely looked at by the FDA, by the World, World Health Organization, even the manufacturers of this medication, Mark, all of whom have found these studies to have significant limitations in their methods and their sample sizes, as well as the outcomes. Um, and unfortunately, these inconclusive findings from these small studies have been blown out of proportion and controversially spread through certain news outlets, um, social media. If ivermectin in fact cured COVID, we would see these being reported consistently in an overwhelming as an overwhelming finding in the studies that have already be done, been done. But unfortunately, we have not seen that. Um, this particular medication can have some extremely serious consequences, especially when livestock doses are being used. Um, these doses are concentrated, they're meant for large animals, and they can lead to toxicity, um, symptoms of nausea, vomiting, um, severe abdominal pain, hepatitis, uh, fevers, uh, blood pressure lowering, heart rate increasing, and then of course, neurological complications such as seizures are also seen. This is not a medication to be taken lightly. It can potentially be life-threatening and fatal. So I really urge our viewers as well as the American public to trust science. We have an excellent way to, pre to prevent severe COVID, to prevent hospitalizations and death. Vaccines again and again have been shown to protect us, to protect our communities, to prevent these severe infections. We have treatments that are under emergency use authorizations that are being used. Ivermectin is not one of them. Um, the best way to combat COVID is to prevent it. And should you get COVID, please see a medical provider. We have treatments that are being used. And if treatment is warranted, this must be done in a medical setting with safe medications that are approved through emergency use under the guidance of trained medical professionals. Please don't take, take, take any medications. And they do have serious complications as we're seeing. And if you have any further questions, we're happy to help. Please ask us before taking anything. And finally, we asked when the Moderna or Johnson & Johnson vaccines could receive full FDA approval like Pfizer. Yes, we are all eagerly awaiting. So um, we do know that Moderna has already applied for full approval. They started that process in June, um, shortly after Pfizer uh, applied, and Johnson & Johnson is expected to apply soon as well. Um, while we don't have any particular dates or comments from the FDA on an expected date of full approval for both of these vaccines, um, we can potentially extrapolate from the timeline that Pfizer was granted full approval from their time of submission. Um, they, it, it took the FDA about 97 days to grant them full approval. So we're hoping that Moderna will follow a similar timeline. Um, so soon is the best answer I can give. Um, what we do know is the FDA meticulously sifts through all the data that is submitted. This includes efficacy data, safety data, as well as things that we generally overlook as the public, like the facilities that um, uh, uh, these vaccines are produced in? Are they safe? Um, are they using consistent processes? Um, so Pfizer getting uh, th their official approval is a stepping stone. Um, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson will likely follow soon. And we're hoping that with these full approvals, um, groups within the un unvaccinated individuals now can come forward and feel comfortable getting this vaccine. Um, at this time, we do know 
you know, both of these are available through emergency use authorization, which should not be taken lightly. We've had more than 65 million people receive the Moderna vaccine, more than 14 million receive the Johnson & Johnson, and 92 million receive the Pfizer vaccine. And as Delta kind of continues to drive surges across the nation and continue to continues to overwhelm ICUs and hospitals in states, particularly with low vaccination rates, we're still recommending our eligible unvaccinated group of Americans to come forward, get the vaccine. We're extremely lucky in our country to have an adequate supply to help prevent these um, surges and complications and deaths. So if you still have questions, please talk to us. We are here. We're here to answer your questions.